Morning, gang. It's Thursday, June the 15th, 2017. A warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom talk, coming in live as always from the Mirable studio here in Royal Berkshire. Look at this. Any idea what this is? Look, uh, go and have a guess. What could this be? It is my shower uh, thing. What turns the water on and cold? Oh, cold, too hot. And that's how it works. Well, recently, I've noticed it has been spinning around. So you kind of try and turn it a bit, and then the whole thing goes round, and you have to take it off and put it off. So I had close inspection, and I noticed the spindle is cracked. And girls, you can't do anything with them once the, sp once the spindle is cracked. Nothing you can do with them. You have to keep taking the damn thing off, and it's like a little square thing it fits onto. I'm sorry, those of you that, those of you that uh, don't understand the technologies of these things, but I'll try to explain it as, as you would understand it. OK, so I did that. So I thought, well, I'll purchase a new one. So I looked up my shower, which actually is about 20 years... My shower's about 20 years old. Oh, yes, I've got a power shower. Oh, none of that pathetic little dripping out of a thing that you get someplace. Have you been to those places? People's houses where you turn on the shower and drip, drip, drip. Well, am I supposed, am I supposed to get the dirt and soap off, soap off with that? Huh? Even Jeremy Corbyn doesn't have one of those. He's got a power shower. He must spend a lot of time under power showers to get rid of the filth that invades his mind all the time. Which, which is clearly damaging his brain. But this water comes, this water powers out of my shower. And without this, I can't control it properly. So... I looked online. Now, how much do you think this piece of plastic, which is about one, which is about three inches across? I said inch. What do you mean, what is it in centimetres? I don't do foreign on here. I told you before, English measurements. I asked a question last night at the quiz. Incidentally, an excellent quiz last night. 11 teams. Thank you very much. Back up to full strength every night at quiz night. Uh, every Wednesday, it's quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street, Islington. Do come and join us. It's a laugh. It's not serious. I don't do... do look at me. Do you think I do serious with a face like this? Huh? No. We don't do serious. Every Wednesday, quiz night, King's Head Theatre Bar, Upper Street, Islington. Come along. By the way, I'm looking for a Thursday gig at the moment. If you know anywhere that might want, want me to do a, 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 a karaoke or a... Preferably a quiz night, actually, on a Thursday. Please get in touch, OK? Not DJing, give that up. Boring. Boring, boring. DJing, to me now, would be like working in Tesco's. Not Waitrose, because they talk to you in there. They have conversations. Sometimes the queue in Waitrose is right out and round the corner because I am having a conversation with the people on customer services. Now, let me think. There's Linda... There's Michelle, there's Jackie. Wonderful, wonderful people. And, of course, the top man himself, manager of Waitrose Bracknell, is Danny. Always dressed impeccably in that dark suit. Anyway, so here we go. So how much do you think one of these would be? This piece of plastic, OK? I looked it up online. 25 quid. 25 quid. Paul Gallagher says 50 quid. Incorrect, Paul. uh, -uh. Uh, uh. No, not 50 quid. 25 quid for this piece of plastic. Are you for real? Of course, my mate says, yeah, you can afford that. It's not the point, dear. I'm being ripped off. I do not like to be ripped off for a piece of plastic. 25 quid. So, good news, boys and girls. Chris Reardon DIY services. Available for all your DIY... Available for... What's that... There's someone at my, that means there's someone at my front door. Let me just turn the noise off. I'm actually, I hope my window cleaner, I thought I'd get a show in today before my lovely window cleaner, Mark, comes around and does my, my windows. Oh, I love watching his little bum as he goes up and down, the, uh, up and down those um, st uh, ladder things against my windows, dear. Him and his mate, who's about 10 years, about 15 years younger than him. Oh, I watch them, I ogle them. I ogle them as they go up and down that ladder. Anyway, back to this. So Chris Reardon DIY services available for all your DIY needs has swung into action, boys and girls. I know Peter. Peter thought it was the whole shower. 
Adam thought it was 30 quid, so you're not far off, Adam the Plumber. I have news on Adam the Plumber's weight loss this week. Yes, I'll come to your messages in a minute. Just a minute, dear. Oh, God. Please be patient. I'll do your messages in a minute after I've done the, done the shower bit, OK? So uh, I, I've, I've swung into action and I got out my super glue. Now, if you're one of those people that sniffs glue to get their kicks, can I just advise you, don't do it with super glue. You can do terrible, terrible accident. You go, and your nose will all stick together. And, and you'll never be able to sniff that lovely glue again. OK, don't use super glue. Evo stick's a bit strong as well. Oh, dear. Oh, that Evo stick. What Actually, what is nice glue? What do I like the smell of? Felt pens. You know the black magic markers that permanently mark? I quite like felt pens. Very, very nice. Is that what they used to use in the black and white minstrel show? Felt pens. You'd never get it off your face, would you? Terribly racist. Racist show. Racist show. Anyway, uh, so I've glued it and I've put a little bit of tape around it to set the glue. Now, that has been... I've been preparing for this moment for four days. I have. I did this on Monday. And I thought, I'll show it to them when I hope it's set. So I'm now going to live on this... Can we go to close-up, Sam? Oh, right, let's try it on that one. Is it, no, not that one. Try it on that one. That'll do. Right. Now, look, I have put a little piece of grey gaffer tape on there. So I've now got to remove this and we're check... Whether or not it's glued together. OK, that's coming off nice and easily. Nice and easy it does it with... That's an advert of some sort, isn't it? Right, let's have a look. Thank you very much. It looks solid as a rock. Bum, 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 bum. That looks quite good. All right, that seems to have fixed it. Oh, yes, yeah, super glue on there. Look at that. Can you see that? Look at that. That's the spindle there, the little square spindle. And you see you push it on. You push, push, push. You push it on there. And that should that should sort that, I reckon. So I'll I'll reinstall that. I'll reinstall that back onto my power shower. And we'll see how that goes. And I will, of course, give you a full report in a future show of how well it's working. Now, I don't use the shower very much. No, that that is not to say I'm a bit like Jeremy Corbyn. I can see that he doesn't have many showers either. No. Uh, I, I shower at the swimming pool, you see. I go swimming swimming most days. So I actually rarely use my own shower. If I haven't been swimming for, say, 25 days, I might use the shower. Because the trouble is I'm on a water meter here. And we can't have that water meter going down, going down on me, going round on me unnecessarily. You know? That's so how I go up, sw I have my swim... Uh, well, I have a little shower before I get in the swimming pool. You must shower. Have you seen the disgusting, dirty people that get in swimming pools without having a shower first? Filthy, dirty plebeians. That's what they are. Ghastly people. Usually people staying at the cheap hotel that the swimming pool is attached to. It's a Hilton. Oh, <laughs> nothing like the Hilton in London. No, dear. You know, the, the, the cheap Hilton. Disgusting people who don't have showers before that. And you, you can literally see, as they get in the water, there's like this film around them. Dirty, filthy people with dirt under their nails as well. You know, oozing out into the water when I accidentally take a gulp of water. <laughs> like that. And I've swallowed the contents of what had just been under their nails. Dirty people. Disgusting people. Yes. So I go and have my swim. Then I have another shower afterwards with soap and nice towels provided by uh, the Living Well, part of the Hilton Hotel range. And that's it. That's my shower for the day. So I do rarely use the shower here. But I just, I mean, it's every time you buy a bit of plastic, it's like when you need a part for the car, isn't it? Huh? When you need a part for the car. A plastic bumper costs an arm and a leg. Why is it? Why is it like £500 when someone knocks your mirror off? It's outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. So there we are, nice and fixed, and I'll let you know how that goes. Right, messages are pouring in to the United Kingdom Talk television complex this morning. Good morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam. And we have congratulations in order for Adam the Plumber, who has, is, is like me on his Slimmers World um, lifestyle thing. 
although I've only been on it two weeks so far. Five and a half pounds lost. More to be lost next week. I'm hoping next week to get to my half a stone and you get a sticker. You get a sticker when you get to half a stone. And do you know the best part of it is? The sticker does not say Labour supporter. That's the whole best part of the whole thing. It says half a stone weight loss, I think. I am hoping on Wednesday, maybe Tuesday night, to show you a sticker. If I'm not, then it means I haven't done it. But this week, Adam has lost four and a half pounds. Yes, thank you very much. He's lost an awful lot of weight since June, uh, since January. Four and a half pounds this week, which he can't understand because the other night he had a Kentucky Fried Chicken. Oh, or should I say, dead animal in batter. Did you enjoy your dead animal with batter and nice chips? Ugh. How can you eat that stuff? Besides, it's only the crispy stuff that you like. It's a sh can you actually go in Kentucky and just buy the crispy coating? Perhaps I could dump some of that in the fat, then you won't have to eat the dead animal. <laughs> Congratulations, Adam. Well done. You are an inspiration to me. You really are. It's because of you I've gone to Slimmer's World. It really is. Most of my, if you're on Slimmer's World, you know what I mean by sins. These are a value that they give to certain foods. And as a man, I can have 25 sins a day. I'm actually managing zero sins a day. Not because I'm trying to do zero sins a day. I'm just aware of, like, a bar of chocolate would probably be about 30 sins. I'm just guessing that one. You know, or you can have 10 bananas, zero sins. It's all about changing what you eat and how you cook it. That's basically it. And, and I'm managing zero sins a day quite easily without even really trying it too much as well. Well done, Adam. Good morning to Ray Reynolds, who was at the quiz last night. And once again, the Ray Reynolds um, team won the quiz. I don't... You're very good, you lot, at the quiz, aren't you? We got Peter. We got Peter in his team, who does uh, a little bit of hospital radio. Peter. Morning, Peter. I think he watches the show sometimes. Good morning, Peter. Congratulations. Last night, excellent. An excellent result last night. I think they got 43 points. And the next ones under them got 41 points. So, well done. Two-point lead is actually quite a lot. That is actually quite a lot. So, there was Peter. There was him. Who else? There was James T. There was... And, and two other blokes. I can't remember their names. A uh, bloke with glasses and another bloke. Quite nicely dressed. A very, very pleasant team. So, congratulations to Ray Reynolds' team last night. And they win a £30 bar tab. Oh, yes. Good morning to Zach Thompson this morning. Morning, Zap. Uh, Zach, we've got Diane Jeb. Morning, Diane. You're always there, aren't you, Diane, darling? Thank you. And, th oh, by the way, thank you, those of you that have shared my show on your wall this morning. That's always appreciated. I see some of you have done that. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning to Candy the Slag in Drag, also known as Jonathan Candy. If you may not know her, she hasn't been on the show before, I don't think, but you can see her up there. Please say hello to her, boys and girls. I know you like to have a little bit of a conversation there. Uh, she is an excellent drag queen. <clears throat> uh, only does the East End. She's really very funny and very, very unpolitically correct. So I love her even more. Let's upset as many people as we can this morning. <laughs> morning, Jonathan. Uh, Justin Peacock's there. Morning, Justin, who runs a pokey little pub up, pub up north. Um, uh, Peter says, it's a Myra shower, Chris. What's a Myra shower? I don't know what a Myra shower is. It's, it's a new team 1000. That's my shower. Maybe if you can find one of these cheaper than 25 quid, what would I be happy to pay for this? 15 quid. I think that's worth 15 quid. Anything more than that, and I think they're taking the mic. I looked on eBay. It's the control knob for a new team 1,000 power shower. Anyone find it cheaper than £25? Let me know, please. Thank you, Peter. Are you a plumber as well, Peter? I don't know if you are. Good morning to Gustav, who's been jogging this morning, I noticed. Gustav has been jogging. Is that wise? Is that how you manage to keep your weight off? Eh? Or is there another reason? Must take those pills on time, dear. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Peter thought I thought, thought, thought I was buying the old shower. I know. I'm not paying £25 for one of those. It's too much. Paul says they always overcharge for small replacement parts. They absolutely do. 
They absolutely do. Uh, he reckons it will break again, Peter. I don't know if it will. I don't know if it will. I fix stuff with super glue and gaffer tape, actually. I've fixed stuff with gaffer tape as well. And um, it, it hasn't broken again. In fact, uh, if, if it breaks again, it's not in the same place. It's like the glue is stronger than the actual item. Of course, um, if the whole thing has got a bit weak now over time, I suppose it will break again somewhere, won't it? But probably not in the same place. We'll see what happens anyway. We'll see. Um, Adam says, could you do a live show from the shower to show that it's working? You're not trying to have a dodgy look at my body again, are you, dear? Please, dear, please. Paul Gallagher says, shower before swimming because of cryptosporidum. What the hell's that? Is that some name that you've just made up, Paul? I hope I don't get a, a question like that in the quiz. I'm not very good at doing foreign names and strange words. Often, the teams playing the quiz have to correct me. That's absolutely true, that is. Morning, Lee. Good morning, Lee. Good morning, lovers. Summer is here. It's beautiful out there today. Absolutely stunning. I woke up 7.20. I went to bed. Now, this is the thing. Now that I've given up the Thursday night late, I am slipping into going to bed earlier. And, and as a result of that, waking up earlier. Now, I'm not tired. I'm not sitting here thinking, oh, you haven't slept properly like that. Because I went to bed... Probably about quarter past one last night, and I'm up again at half past. I was woke up again at twenty past seven. Of course, the sun's coming in past the curtains, and I just had to get up. So I've had my breakfast already, which was an overnight oats thing, which I told you about last night. Little jar, layers, dried porridge oats, fat-free yogurt. Uh, in this case, blueberries, and then the same again. Dried po and you know three lots of layers. In a jar, put the top on, put it in the fridge for about eight hours, bring it out, it's all soaked up together. Oh, it's delicious. Absolutely delicious. Really is. Good morning to Anthony Leary, who says it's National Chris Reardon Day in Latvia, August the 8th. Did you know that? I'm very big in Latvia. Yes, they've got statues and everything. And on the t all the TV show programmes are constantly replaying my shows out. From years gone by. Isn't that marvellous? They begging me to move to Latvia. And I said, no, I'm sorry. I'm Theresa May's bitch. I am Theresa's bitch. I still am. I still, All those terrible manifesto and those terrible mistakes that they've made in the last few weeks after doing so well. I'm still there. We've got to keep the blue flag flying. <laughs> what a mess. What an absolute mess. And I said this before. How can the Conservatives, who were doing so well, get it so badly wrong in the last three weeks? What a complete and utter mess. Someone should hang for that. Anyway, onwards and upwards to the next election, which I am predicting will be in October. You know, and I don't care who you vote for. It doesn't matter to me. We, we, it's nice to have a discussion. We can have discussions, sensible discussions, not like these blooming, uh, what are they called, activists. The Labour lefty activists who go on and on and on. And they're like blinkered. They can't see anything else other than their own ideas in their heads. They won't accept anything from anywhere else. I'm actually quite in the middle. You know, I, I, I actually quite like the idea of renationalising railways uh, and power companies and water companies. I like the idea of renationalising that. I do like that. But then I think, well, where's the money going to come from? And that sort of thing. You know, but they are totally blinkered, one-way tickets. You've got to be open to everything. I'm probably on paper. Probably on paper, I'm more of a liberal than anything else, I would guess. Because I'm, 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 oh, I'm so close to the middle, just slightly to one side, you know. Um, but it, it's the activists that day. They, they do my head in, and they're on this blooming Facebook wall all the time. Last night, can you can you believe the latest one? So the latest thing is, okay, that terrible fire that all those people died in uh, a couple of nights ago. Dreadful block that went off. Uh, of course, load of them are straight on there. This is the fault of the Tory government. I mean, it's unbelievable. How can you be blaming the government for that? How is that their fault? Oh, well, well, it's all their fault. And all these excuses coming out. Well, OK, 
OK, fair enough. So that's what you think now. So you think they're in charge of that block of flats? Now, what about what counts? Who runs London? What government is that? What party is that? Labour. When the block was built in the 1970s, who, what, what, what government was in power, power gain? Hands up anyone? Labour. But I don't blame the Labour government or the Conservatives or anyone else for that. It was a fire. It was a fire. Don't know what's caused it yet. Don't know the reason. Can we not at least wait? And if it was due to this cladding that was put on by the company that were paid to put the cladding on, the, which which is look, look looks likely to what it is, you know, are they are they all Conservative voters? Is that why we blame the government? Don't be so bloody stupid. How stupid can you be? It, and it's getting to the point now where I'm just start. I'm going to start deleting people because I'm sick to death of it. Everything that goes wrong, oh, it's the Tories' fault. Oh, it's the Tories' fault. Oh, it's the Tories' fault. They're so stupid. Retarded is the word I'm looking for. You've got to have your mind open to everything. Haven't you? Don't you think? It's like all these idiots that blame Muslims for all the terrorists. No, I don't think so. Now, listen, put it this way. I'm Roman Catholic. When the IRA were blowing up places, did you blame all the Catholics? No, of course you didn't. Well, that's what you're doing. Stupid, stupid people. And it's almost like some of them don't even think for themselves. They see someone say if, if something and all of a sudden, yeah, 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 and they all fall into love like sheep. Like sheep. Stupid, stupid people. Morning, Lee, again. Uh, it's going to be Barbara's in Wokingham today. Oh, you should have told me I would have come down there. Uh, do I need to go to Wokingham today? No. I tell you when I go, Lee, I go on a Tuesday and I go every other week. So not next week. We can't afford to go there every week, dear. Have you gone mad? And if you go on a Tuesday, now I don't know what day is it today, Thursday. Oh, you'll get a 13 pound today, mate. I don't know what sort of haircut you have. If, if you go th Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it's 13 pounds. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I am paying 10 pounds now. It's only £10. You're going the wrong day, dear. Tuesday week I'll be there at about ten past one after Slimmer's World. Slimmer's World on a Tuesday with Linda. We love Linda. We love Linda. So enjoy your haircut. Oh, by the way, Lee, the boy's left. Brandon, you know that nice boy? He's gone. Don't know if he left. Don't know if he got sacked. It's all a bit hush-hush and very, very exciting. I'm desperately trying to find out where he's gone. You know, there's a lovely lady in there from Nepal. Um, she has of Chinese, Taiwanese appearance, you know, that sort of appearance. And she's good. She's love and she's nice. And she does, she's not like that. <laughs> Are you going on holiday? <laughs> Have you got a girlfriend? <laughs> Shut up and cut my hair. No, she's not like that. She's, she's lovely. Might, she has a little bit of a conversation, but she don't go on and on. Oh, my God. Where Ronnie goes and gets his hair cut, I, I mean, which is where I, I did go for a couple of weeks, but I found him a bit rough with that. Bzz, bzz, bzz. He was a bit rough with that, so I've stopped going. Where Ronnie goes, I was up there the other week, and I was sitting there waiting for and there was a woman cutting, a young girl, she was, cutting his hair. No, no, she, so, I beg your pardon. He, Ronnie was having his hair cut, and next to him was a bloke having a haircut with... Um, uh, uh, with, with a girl cutting it, right? And, oh, I'm just, I've, you know, I've turned on my air. It's really hot in here now. Really hot. Got new air conditioning coming Tuesday next week. They're going to spend all day doing that, apparently. So new air conditioning coming next week. So I don't know if I, I might get a bit of a, a cold breeze off that. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, and the woman next, next, next sitting, uh, standing next to Ronnie cutting some other bloke's hair. Oh, God. And she had a loud voice as well. On. And on, and she did not shut up. It done my head in. It really did my head in. On and on and on she went, dear. God's sake. Paul says, is actually a shower sufficient? So let's oh, stop that, Paul. I'm being rude, love. Rude. <laughs> Good morning to young Tony Powell. Good morning, Tony. Adam says he's lost three stone, two pounds since January. How good's that, eh? Three stone. You imagine losing three stone. You go into the supermarket today and fill up, fill up a basket with sugar, packets of sugar, and that'll be about three stone. It's a lot of weight. 
I bet you're using less petrol now in your car as well. <laughs> Fantastic, Adam. Good morning to Andrew Hunt. Morning from sunny Wigan, up to north. Morning, Andrew. Is it nice up there today? I think, I don't know if you've got rain today. They said it was going to cool off tomorrow a little bit. Not too much, though. It's lovely, lovely weather. It really is. Morning, Kevin Webster. Uh, hello to Courtney. Good morning, Courtney. Lying down on sofa, which is why you had an operation yesterday. Well, what have you had done? Have you had something removed? Did they give it to you in a jar? I hope it's sealed. You don't want any of that liquid spilling out onto your lovely clean sofa, dear. <laughs> Gustav says nine mi he's run nine miles. Gustav has run nine miles this morning, every other day, at the gym every other day, although a little dab would certainly... <laughs> God's sake, man. Nine miles. I used to do running, Gustav. I did, actually. Um, it's a few years ago now. And I had to stop because my knees were giving me a real a real pain in my knees, which started, I was running around, and I built up to running for an hour, non-stop. And I was on a circuit, I was on the circuit I do, uh, which is not, not in a gym, I go um, over the forest, it's beautiful over there. I used to run through there and see the deer and all that. And um, I had to stop, unfortunately, because my knees were hurting a lot. And I went to the doctor and I said, I've got pains. And it was the side of my knees to the point where you would you would end up hobbling and not be able to move it. And then you'd go to bed and generally wake up and it would be all right again. Um, but I did go to the doctor and he said, no, you're jogging, aren't you? I said, yes. He said, no, you must stop immediately. Not good. Not good at all to go jogging, unfortunately. All right. Now, do you know, I think I'm actually getting cold air out of that today. Is that working? Don't say they're putting in nuke and air conditioner and this one started working. <laughs> Could that be possible? Could it have fixed itself somehow? This is going to be ripped out on Tuesday. <laughs> so if you're doing nine miles, that's fantastic, Gustav. I'd love to do jogging again, but I can't. Although the doctor said, just go for a long walk. He said, you won't do any damage if you're walking and you can walk for even further than you go running and you won't get knackered out. So there we are. Uh, good morning, Sean. Hello, lovely Sean. All right. You must have the air conditioning on if you're wearing a blazer. No, it is quite hot in here. I might have to take this off in a minute. Might have to remove an item of clothing. Oh, people love that, don't they? People removing items of clothing. Look at that Love Island. God's sake. Pretty on the outside. Completely vile and disgusting on the inside, those people. Why would anyone want to hook up with one of those? Other than, you know, uh, 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 eh? Awful people. Um, Paul says that thing he said, clyptoclotrovitis or whatever it is, is, is a parasite that the chlorine in the pool can't kill. Is that right? Oh, my God, have I got parasites? Not in the pill at the Hilton Hotel. Jolly dear. Perhaps in the council run one. I don't pay £500 a year to use a pool with swimming with bacteria and viruses in it, lovey. God, there's enough viruses in me now. Dear me. Tony says on the subject of the tower block, it wasn't anyone's fault directly, unfortunately. It somehow takes an incident like the tower block to learn that certain materials cannot be used. You would have thought they checked it out first, wouldn't you, Tony? It's terrible. The bloke on the telly this morning uh, was saying there's like a gap between the, the new cladding and the insulation, which keeps people warm, I suppose. And the fire would have used that as a chimney. I think that's what he was saying on the uh, telly this morning. Terrible. Morning, Guillermo. Haven't seen you for a while. Hello, sir. Welcome to our little live show. Um, <laughs> Courtney says, ah, oh, they've drilled into my spine and then cut, heart, cut, their, ooh, dear, cut their way through to the pancreas where they burnt all the nerves away. Allowed me two to three months where the pain isn't as bad as it normally is. Oh, my word, you've been through it all, haven't you? Gosh. You've had your bones drilled out and everything. Um, I, I don't even like it when a dentist does that, dear. God's sake, man. Well, well done. You take it easy. Let me let just watch a few of these shows and let me ease. Let me ease the pain out of you, all right? Do you like my cat cup? Look at my cat cup. There's a little video on my wall this morning, probably just underneath this one somewhere, uh, that, that I, I, I located one of those. You know, on, on Facebook and 
face uh, other things where you can put like a, some sort of template around you. And there's one of my head and cats. There's a cat sitting on my head, which I thought was quite amusing last night. Now, I was talking about my Tuesday yesterday, which we didn't get to the end of that. And I got as far as telling you that I have now found... Do you know, I'm sure that's working now. Do you, can I just go and fill my air conditioner? Is that cold air coming out of there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I, do you know, I think it is. I think that started working. <laughs> <laughs> Am I spending £1,200 unnecessarily here? That is definitely cooler in here than it is coming out. <laughs> Too late now, I've paid the minimum deposit. Never mind. Anyway, I was telling you that I've been in Waitrose um, on Tuesday after I had my hair cut, my Slimmer's World thing, and I discovered, uh, while I was looking around for the garlic, now I'm a bit lazy with the garlic. Obviously, you get garlic bulbs, and you have to peel the damn thing. Well, is there a way of peeling garlic that's easy? Is there? I don't know. But you peel the garlic and you have to chop it up and you get it all over your hands. They do frozen garlic in packets. Yeah, it's about £2.39, which is probably four times the price of just buying a garlic bulb, to be honest. But you haven't got your hands messy and it doesn't smell or anything like that. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Not only that, they've also got chopped frozen chilies, Jalapeno chilies or whatever they're called, the red ones. So easy, because I'm always a bit fearful of chopping up chilies. I do like hot and spicy now. My tastes have changed quite a lot over the last few years, and I love hot, spicy food. I love it. In particular, chilli. I love chilli. And you see this bit on my head here, right? This is no joke. When I'm eating chilli, that bit here absolutely sweats profusely. <laughs> But the top of my head gets soaking wet. That's true, that is. But now you don't have to chop these things up. Because you get it on your hands and your eyes. <gasps> I, I put rubber gloves on when I'm doing chilies. You know, marigolds are not cheap. A pair of marig... That is definitely working. What am I going to do? Tell him not to come? <laughs> or I could have the new one put in the other room, actually. I don't know what to do now. I've got until Tuesday. I'll try again. I'll, I'll, I'll keep trying that today and see what it's doing. <laughs> it was out trying to fix it the other week, this air conditioner. Oh, it's lovely and cool. That's lovely. This is definitely working. And there's no fl there was a flashing light on it indicating a fault. Oh, well, it's not on. the light's not flashing anymore. Oh, well, never mind. Um, where was I? Yes, so frozen peppers, and you just cut the top off and, and pour them in, and that's it. And frozen basil, all sorts of things like that, that are kind of awkward to chop up, and you don't want to get them on your hands. Guillermo don't like spicy food. Really? Oh, I find that surprising. Oh, most people like a bit of spicy food. My mate don't. Oh, and he does make an issue of it whenever we go out somewhere. Moan. Oh, it's not spicy, is it? Oh, it's not peppery. Mind you, that's his, you know, that's what he likes. I wouldn't want to go somewhere and find food that I didn't like. In fact, I rarely go out to eat. I don't like it. <clears throat> I don't like it. Especially, I don't like having to tip people. You know, it's bad enough giving the lady who cuts my hair, she charges me £10. I have to give her 25 pence tip every week as well. Dear me. Anyway, so that's that. So I did that. Um... Then, what else? Uh, then I came home. Oh, I collected some more papers for my incontinent cat. Nicked, up, nicked some more newspapers from the train station. Not, 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 when I say nicked, I don't mean I'm nicking copies of the Daily Mail or anything. The free newspapers, where you're allowed a free newspaper. Yeah, but I have about two dozen of them. And I put them in bags, in the car, and off we go. For my incontinent cat. We don't do thieves, dear. Do I look like a thief? Oh, I, I know, I'm stealing time from you at the moment. It's very funny, very funny. Came back here, uh, dropped Ronnie off. Uh, he had been out to get some cat food for me the day before because when Ronnie does cat food, he checks it all out before. 
uh, I think he's got some sort of app where you can compare the price of cat food. And it's quite a considerable saving. So, for example, this time I've got three boxes. I do Felix cat food, doubly delicious. The meat one. You can't make a cat vegetarian, unfortunately. Very unwise to try. They can get very ill if you try and do that, so be warned. Um, <clears throat> what was I saying now? Oh, yes. So we got three three boxes of cat food for £10. Usually about £4.25 each. So that's quite a considerable saving. Sometimes I'll get three, six, nine, twelve. I'll get 15 boxes, saving 15 quid. It's worth doing, so he does all that. So that's all in my car with the newspaper and a lot of newspapers. A lot of newspapers. We managed to get a lot this time. A lot of newspapers and my shopping. Drove home. <coughs> Do you know I had to make about seven trips from the car back into the house? This was on Tuesday. Anyway, eventually got all the stuff in. Uh, went to bed. Got up again. And I woke up after an hour. I turned on my phone. And Duke, uh, our friend Duke, who's often with us on here, um, he was on us. Uh, and I sent him a message. And he rung from his workplace. Now, he works at a betting shop. And apparently, do you know, they get really bad abuse in there. People who work in betting shops. Terrible abuse from people. They get druggies in there. Blooming drunks. A little bit like the people watching this programme at the moment. I expect a lot of you are druggies and drunks, aren't you, dear? No work. Nothing to do during the daytime. So you thought you'd pop your heads around the door and see what I'm doing. Is that what it is? Have you got a cup of tea, incidentally? Mm. So I got up and I started doing my cooking. I was cooking homemade arabetta sauce, or whatever it's called. I can never say the word. Arabetta sauce. You know, the, the hot and spicy one. All from scratch. Although slightly cheesing with tins of tomatoes, tins of cherry tomatoes. And then, of course, the frozen uh, garlic. So I put some of the frozen garlic in. And then the frozen peppers. Now, <clears throat> I wasn't sure how much peppers to put because, I mean, if you chop up two peppers, you know you've put two peppers in. When they're frozen and in bits, a bit more difficult to tell. And I was looking at these peppers and I don't know how much I've put in here. So I've got my big pot. I've got some spray light in the bottom. And it says, cook the garlic and the peppers uh, in there for a few minutes. Don't let the garlic turn brown. So I put that in there and that in there. Also, I added to the recipe a packet of onions. Again, a little bit lazy with the onions. I can't be cutting up onions. I like to buy them all chopped up and ready. All right? So it's all in there cooking away. And then I put in the peppers. And the pan was a bit hot. So the peppers have gone in. Psh, no, that, that noise. Psh, and I looked in. And this, this, like, steam came out at me. Straight in my face. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought, that's got to be the peppers. Have I overdone the peppers? <laughs> I, I took an intake of, of pepper steam. Whatever it was there. God, it went half strong. Blimey. You ever done that? So I carried on cooking it, made all my stuff, uh, put the cherry tomatoes in and everything else. And it was really nice. And then I ate it. Uh, Ronnie came around a little bit later on. And uh, he had chicken skewer things with chips. I had my wholemeal spaghetti and arabata sauce. And a lot of it. A lot of it. Let me tell you, you're really stuffed after a bowl of that. Completely sin-free if you're on Slimmer's World. That does not count as, as as sins. Really enjoyed it. It was probably the hottest I've ever cooked anything. It was, oh, it burnt my mouth as it went down. It really did. And a little head was sweating away again. Absolutely delicious. Delicious. And when I do these recipes, I'll do them once as exactly to the recipe. And then when I, if I like it, I'll, next time I do it, I'll do it times three. So I've got three meals in there. So I had one yesterday, put one in the fridge and one in the freezer. You see, that's how I do it. Oh, it's so... I, 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 do you know, I'm mouth-watering now thinking about my Arabetta spaghetti sauce. I love it. I absolutely love it. So we had that, followed by some strawberry and uh, fat-free yoghurt. Very nice indeed. And then we watched a bit of telly. Holby City. Are you watching Holby at the moment? Oh, Moa's left. You know the big black lady who does the cancer operations and heart oper I think she does cancer. She's gone. I think she's left the programme. She's been in it for years. So disappointed. 
I hope she's going to come back. It looked, well, she, right at the very end, she came back into the into one of the offices with her husband that she was going to split up with and said that I'd made a mistake, I'm sorry and all that. So I don't know if she is going to stay with it. It looked like she was leaving. We will find out next week on the next episode of Holby. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. It's like that, Holby. I love the opening credits. Followed by Broken. Anyone watching Broken? It's about a Catholic priest who people come to problem to their problems with. But in the past, he had been abused himself by a priest teacher. Uh, a, 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 a teacher who is a priest. Like, I, th I think it was like a school and, a t and he was abused himself. This, this pervert putting his hand on his leg and things when he was a little boy. And he keeps having flashbacks to this all the time. <clears throat> Anyway, it got very exciting, and at the end of this particular episode, he went... Now, he, th this priest is now, I would say, early 40s. So, of course, the abused priest, the, the abuser is now 70-ish, sort of 70-ish, and he goes to his house. He knocks, and as he's there, the old priest comes down, and, and it's, it's awful, awful, awful. And the old priest is, like, not apologetic at all. You know, and he's like, well, you enjoyed it, didn't you? Awful, awful. So I'm watching that, and it's an excellent programme uh, available on the BBC iPlayer. If you want to watch that, you'll probably bring a tear or two to your, uh, uh, to your eye, that, all right? And uh, that was my Tuesday. How busy was I? How busy was I? Um, Adam says, have you used your United Kingdom Talk teapot? No, that's over there at the moment. We've just replaced that with my United Kingdom Talk ukulele. A gift given to me, as given to me by Ray Reynolds, International. Teapot over there. You know, I changed my display here. Morning, Scott. Scott's on uh, in New Zealand. Morning, Scott. Kevin says, I, I love going out for meals. Do you like going out, Kevin? I don't. Don't like going out for meals. No. Very expensive. You don't get the food you want always. And you don't know what I've done to the food. I don't trust anyone anymore. <laughs> Tony Power says, I see Donald Trump is one step, uh, one step further and I could have been there. <laughs> Tony says, I see Donald Trump is one step further from being impeached. Hopefully he will be gone by the end of the year. I, yeah, it's a bit of a, <laughs> it's a bit of a raffle. I think we need to have a little betting thing going here. Who's going first, Theresa or Donald? <laughs> And I love Teresa. I don't want her to go. But I think it's a bit of a gamble, really, to see who's going to go first, you know. Ah, oh, well. That's the way it is. Um, I'd like to congratulate my sister this morning because my sister has made a table. I'm going to show you this now. Would you like to see what my sister has made? Look at this. She has made this yesterday with my nephew, Gary, her son. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? And she's made that out of a pallet. Not quite sure how she's done it. Um, it looks like half a pallet to me. My nephew apparently gave her uh, some help with the legs. And you can actually see that's a pallet. You've got the bit underneath there as well. Isn't that clever? She's obviously varnished it as well there. Um, I hope she's sanded down the edges. But very, very clever to be able to make something like that. I'm not um, clever at all when it comes to making things, DIY or anything like that. I mean, quite honestly, I'm surprised the size of that has stuck together. <laughs> I'm just not good at doing anything like that. Anyway, there we are. Uh, Adam says, when you moved to... St oh, good morning to Mark Weller this morning. Mark used to sit next to me in geography and many other classes at the London Oratory School. Good morning, Mark. It's one of my friends from school there. That's Mark. Uh, Adam says, when you move the studio to Studio 2B, you must incorporate a display cabinet. Then every now and again, we can have a reshuffle cabinets. Very good, Adam. Very good. We need to reshuffle. I see old Michael Gove is back, isn't he? Oh, he scares me. He looks like an executioner, doesn't he? Don't you think Michael Gove? You can see him in a long black leather jacket holding an axe, probably over Teresa's head like he did to Rob poor old Boris. Lovely jubbly. Now, 
I gotta say to you, although that aircon's working, I think that is working, you know. Right? It's it's not that cold. So it's called the that's what's happened, isn't it? It's called the room down, but it's not so cold that I've got to put put put. Oh, I don't know actually, but it's definitely made a difference to the room. <laughs> Anyone want to buy a second hand air conditioning unit? <laughs> oh dear, dear me! How are we doing? Right, what have I got to tell you today? Let me have a look. What's happening today? Told you about the quiz. Oh, I dropped the posters in. Excellent quiz last night, as I say, at the King's Head Theatre. But I dropped the posters in for the Sunday karaoke. We do Sunday karaoke now in Camden Town, if you ever want to come down there. At the Camden Eye. Okay, the Camden Eye. Uh, come out of the tube station on the... Oh, what's the name of that road? Is it Finchley Road? Oh, gosh, can't remember the name of that damn road again now. Can someone tell me who remembers what the name of that road is? Is it Simp Finchley Road? Anyway, it's every Sunday, 8 till 11 o'clock, karaoke at the Camden Eye. You come out the tube station, it's there, right in front of you across the road, okay? So come along to that one, because that's a really good laugh. Nice people in there, lovely people in there. Um, let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Oh, yes, the, the man in the gym, there's a, a, a bloke in the gym. I don't know how we got onto the subjects, actually. What was it? Oh, that was it, because uh, Ronnie, uh, my mate, always comes swimming with me up at the Hilton Hotel. And there's a, a really nice personal trainer in there. I'm not sure what his name is. He's, he's very tall and he's got glasses. It looks, it looks like he's spent half his life down the drip gym and eats lettuce leaves, you know, for a living. And... Um, uh, I was so, he's saying, where's your mate today? Oh, I said, he's not here today. I said, in fact, he's dead. He said, what? I said, oh, no, sorry, that's his personality. At which point he laughed. I, laughed. He said, I said, you know he's not my other half, don't you? He said, oh, yeah, he said, I know that. He said, were you two ever an item? I said, yeah, a long, long time ago. Very, very long time, about 27 years ago. He said, all oh, right. And uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, would you ever go back there? I said, no, absolutely not. No, nope, he would not be able to put up with me, and I could not put up with him. Absolutely no way. Well, we can just about manage three hours. <laughs> it's true. I can just about manage three hours with my best mate, and then that's it. <clears throat> we have been on holidays together, and it has been disastrous. I actually went to Mexico with him one year, and I came on a cruise, and I came back a week early. We couldn't stand the sight of each other. It's true. Absolutely true. Good morning, Dino. Bit late, love. Oh, dear, but you are a bit late. We're nearly done. Look, we're nearly done. I've got 13. I've got to get ready for my window cleaner. You'd like my window cleaner. Mark, his name is. Nice. Sadly married. This seems to be part of my problem. I only seem to fa fancy now young fathers. I don't know what all that's about. When I say young, that's anyone under the age of 45. Yes, it is still young. 45 is still young. I only marry younger fathers. <laughs> Sorry, I only... <laughs> I don't fancy anyone gay at all. No, only young father. Isn't that strange? <laughs> this was pointed out to me by Cheryl, <clears throat> who was on holiday. She's... um. My um, uh, my nephew's daughter's carer, because uh, uh, my nephew has a little daughter, she's two years old, and she's a, a severely handicapped. So uh, that's her carer, Cheryl, who just happens to be the sister of my nephew's wife. It sounded like an episode of Dynasty, isn't it? It was her that noted it. She, she said, I think I realise your problem. I said, what's that? She says, you only fancy young fathers. <laughs> I'll get rid of the woman, dear. Yeah, I'll give her 50, 50 pound in Marks and Spencer's vouchers and come round to my caravan. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful doing shows on the internet? Say anything you like. Absolutely anything you like. All right. Um, where was I? Oh, yes, I was talking about Ronnie. And uh, no, I came back early from the holiday. It was, we had a terrible fight. <laughs> and a few days later, you make up again. I said, there's no way I could ever go out with him again. No, no, it wouldn't work. Um, good. What else have I got to tell you this morning? In the... Uh, I was going to do today haunting TV themes from your childhood. 
Do you remember those haunting TV themes from your childhood? I think I'm going to save that. And I'll save it for... Um, I'll save it for the upload radio recording on Saturday, OK? So on Saturday, I'm going to do haunting TV themes from your childhood. If there's, And when I say haunting, you know, there's a certain certain bit of music that's... OK, let me play you one piece of haunting music that's haunting to me. Let's play you The Brothers. Uh, this was a TV series in the 1970s called The Brothers. All right, have a little listen to this. This is what I mean by a haunting TV theme, OK? <laughs> Do you remember this at all? That's a haunting TV thing. So we're going to do that one for the uh, upload radio show <coughs> on Saturday morning. So if you could have a little think about that and uh, maybe even write down a few of your favourite TV, uh, haunting TV themes from your childhood... Uh, it'd be lovely if you could call in on Saturday morning at some time. We'll probably go to record it about 11 o'clock on Saturday morning for the Upload Radio Show. And we'll do that on Saturday, all right? So something for you to think about. Haunting TV themes from your childhood. Tony Power says, Black Beauty is yours. Oh, yes. That's a haunting TV theme. A haunting TV theme isn't something that's happy and like the generation game. Life is the name of the game and I want to play the game with you. Ba -ba -da 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 -da. Or Larry Grayson's generation game. Shut that door. Uh, can we find that one, actually? Let me see if I can find that one. That's a, that's a good TV theme. Shut that door, Larry Grayson. One moment, please. Searching the internet now for you. And then I'll do the birthdays and I'll have to go. Oh, hang on a minute. Uh, let me close something. Got too many things open now. We're having trouble keeping up here. There we are. Um, Larry Grayson's Generation Game. Here we go. Stand by, everyone. Here it is. Lovely theme tune to this for Larry Grayson's Generation Game. <laughs> I love it. What's in store? The best of relations is Here we go. Larry Grayson is here to play so. Shut that door. Shut that door. Oh, yeah. And then Larry would come out the door, wouldn't he? And everyone would clap and go mad. I love it. Larry Grayson's Generation Game, Saturday night on BBC One Colour. I love it. Dino says most of the country and Western themes were haunting. Yes, of course. Funnily enough, Dino, I was thinking about John Wayne the other day for some reason. I think I might like to dig out a John Wayne today. You rarely see Westerns on the telly now, don't you? I suppose they're considered racist now, are they, I suppose? Everyone's got something to moan about, haven't they? Oh, we can't show that anymore. That's racist. What's that race to get? Oh, the indigenous people of the USA. Oh, for God's sake, get real. Get real, honestly. All right, let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls. And then I must prepare my home for my uh, lovely... Um, um, for my uh, window cleaner to arrive. He's doing inside, outside and solar panels today. Busy boy, that'd be about 30 quid. Dear me, how can I afford such things? Uh, happy birthday this morning to... Alistair Wildon. Happy birthday. Oh, we've only got... We, only got, we haven't got many birthdays today, have we? Alistair Wildon, happy birthday, Alistair, all right? Uh, happy birthday this morning to Paul Kemp, 36 years old today. Happy birthday, Paul. Happy birthday to one of our Manilo girls. Uh, always a Manilo girl there somewhere. Oh, yes. At the Copa, Copacabana, for da, 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 Sue Hammer. And I'm looking at your picture, Sue. I see, I see, you have done... One of the platinum experiences. Oh, yes. Does that mean you didn't go on holiday one year to, to afford that? <laughs> a bit dear, isn't it? But if you want to do that, fantastic. She has met Barry Manlo. Happy birthday to Sue Hammer, Hammer today. And uh, also, 35 years ago. Oh, oh, who's that? 
It's Matt Parker. Where have you been hiding, Matt? I haven't seen you for a while now. Thought you would have come down to my karaoke at the Cams and I. That, that You'd like it there. Cams and I. Happy birthday this morning to Matt Parker. So let's do the tune. Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Alistair, Paul, Matt and Sue. Happy birthday to you. All right. Enjoy your birthday. It's Thursday. I have a nice night off tonight, boys and girls. Uh, and it's all planned. I've got my, my man coming to do... Um, uh, my windows off to the swimming pool, a little bit of cooking this afternoon, a little bit of cooking tonight. Oh, I'm looking for, I do like a day off, dear. And the cat is at this moment in the garden going doing her circles. Round and round she goes. And she was a good girl last night. She was a good girl last night. I picked her up to put her outside after I got in for the quiz night. You know, that's not, that's not so cold now. Air conditioning, not as cold as it was a little while ago. Yes, no, I, th I think that does need... It's not working like it used to work anyway. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying then? Can't remember. Doesn't matter. Uh, Tony says, Riz or Lon... Oriolani. Riz Oriolani was a bit of an expert on haunting music. He wrote the theme music for Cannibal Holocaust. It was a beautiful piece of music for such a horrid movie. Oh, I, I don't know that one. I don't know that one. Um, <clears throat> I've got all, I had all my haunting themes lined up to play for you this morning, but it got to, I mean, I could have done it as well, but I think, I think that's an excellent one to, to save for our upload radio recording on uh, Saturday morning, isn't it? Anyway, enjoy your Thursday, boys and girls, and thank you very much, as always, for taking a little bit of time out of your day to join me in the morning. I hope I, I've brightened up your day just a tiny little bit. Except for the Labour activists, which I'm going to start deleting from my wall because I'm sick to death of them spouting off all the time. Have a lovely Thursday, boys and girls, and get out in the sunshine. I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.